I'm going to show you how to decorate a tea towel using an iron at home and a heat transfer design. We had a limited number of kits available for pickup at the drive up window, first come first serve. If you were able to pick up a kit, it included a blank white tea towel and a pre-cut partially weeded heat transfer design. If you're curious as to how this design was created or if you wanted to make your own, we have uh, links in the description of this video that bring you to tutorials using the Cricut Design Space and the Silhouette Studio programs to make this and cut it in the Cricut and Silhouette machines. The craft kit also includes a piece of parchment paper, which you're going to need when it comes time to iron your design. And then at home, you're gonna need access to an iron or another heat source and an ironing pad. It will also help if you have a weeding tool or a paper clip or a safety pin, but it's not necessary. Once you've gathered all of your materials, you're ready to get started. Once the heat transfer vinyl is cut, the next thing to do is to preheat your heat source. If you have access to a Cricut Easy Press or a Clamshell T-shirt press, we recommend using that, but if all you have at home is an iron, this will work too. When you choose an iron to use for your heat transfer vinyl, it's best to find an iron with the least amount of holes for steam. The more steam holes you have, the more unevenly distributed the heat's going to be. You also want to make sure there is no water left in your water chamber. If there's any steam on the iron when you go to use it, it will ruin your heat transfer design. You'll want to follow the instructions for the heat transfer material you're using. We're using the EasyWeed um, brand, so it wants to be heated up at 300 degrees approximately for 10 seconds. On a standard iron, we find that the setting that's two settings below the cotton setting works, uh, works well. So if you set it to cotton, that's the highest your iron can go. That's going to be too hot. You want it at least one or two settings below cotton. We recommend starting with a low heat versus a high heat. Again, if your heat is too hot, it will ruin your design. So I'm going to go ahead and plug my iron in so it can start heating up. And I'm going to set my iron and towel aside. And I'm going to finish preparing the vinyl design. Now, after the vinyl's been cut, it will look something like this. So there is what's referred to as a shiny side and a not shiny side. The not shiny side is the side we're going to do a process called weeding. Weeding is removing the parts of the design you don't want in your finished product. It helps a lot if you have a weeding tool. You can also use a paper clip or a safety pin if you don't have something like this at home. And for this design, we needed to weed all of the inside parts of your letters. We did this for you. Um, so if you were able to pick up a craft kit, this part should be done already. So this is what it looks like after the inside parts of the letters have been weeded. So if you are able to pick up a craft kit, this is what you should have in your kit. We did not remove the bigger part of the heat transfer vinyl, this background piece. So you'll notice that we cut a corner part for you. So that way, if you don't have a tool like this at home, it's easier to pull. So we're going to go ahead and remove all of this background black that we don't need with our design. So find that corner we pre-cut for you and start to peel. And you want to peel gently. You want to make sure that you don't ruin your design as you're peeling. You should notice as you get towards the letters that it will separate from um, the piece. And you want to make sure you're taking your time with this so you don't accidentally peel up a letter on it um, unintentionally. And you should see as you peel that you have this clear plastic on one in one hand and this black plastic in another. So we're just going to keep peeling. And it's okay if you rip it into two parts. 
the uh, black plastic that you're peeling off is just going to go in the garbage. And after you remove the unnecessary black heat transfer vinyl, you should be left with a clear plastic sheet with your design still stuck to it. So this is what it needs to look like before you go to iron it on to your towel. Now that my iron has preheated, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of set this down on the table gently, and I'm gonna prepare my towel to be heated. You'll want to make sure that you grab the parchment paper at this step. Um, depending on your iron, you know, you want to make sure that you keep your towel clean. So I recommend ironing your towel with parchment to protect your towel. You're also going to need this parchment when it comes time to heat the design on so the design doesn't melt onto your iron. Now the towels we provided in the kit were um, tea towels. They are cotton and they came 28 inches by 28 inches we went ahead and folded it in half for you and then folded it in thirds so your finished towel ends up being about uh, six inches wide and ready to hang on a towel rack so what we recommend is unfolding it so this is the surface I'm going to decorate. So unfold it so it's so it's only uh, 14 by 28. You want to make sure you don't have any folds or hens underneath. If you have your towel folded, um, the thicker it is, the harder it is to get a like a um, soft surface to heat onto. Um, we recommend that you get any wrinkles out that haven't been ironed out yet. So again, I'm going to use my parchment to protect my white towel so I don't get it dirty. And for this step, you're going to use the iron just like a standard iron. You're going to move it around and get those wrinkles out. And then what I like to do is create um, creases to show where the folds are going to be. So I'm going to put my design here. Normally I would fold the towel backwards so that way it's not covering where the design's going to go. But for this step, since I'm using this just to see where the folds will be, I'm going to fold frontwards. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fold until they meet pretty evenly in the center, so it's about three inches on either side. I'm going to cover my towel again with my parchment paper, and I'm only going to iron where the folds meet so I can create a crease to see where I need to place my design. So now hopefully you should have two creases and a wrinkle-free surface to iron onto. You then wanna take your heat transfer vinyl that's been weeded and you want to place it on your towel where you want your design to go. Keep in mind it's going to rest on the towel rack somewhere around here in the halfway mark. So you don't want it too high. You also don't want it too low. I generally recommend for a towel like this about three inches from the base. And then you want to try and center it to your fold. So I have about a half inch on either side of my fold. You will notice that the bottom side of this clear plastic is adhesive. That's intentional so that way it sticks to your um, fabric so it doesn't shift when you go to iron it. So now that we have it placed, from uh, my point of view it looks pretty well centered and uh, parallel to the base. We're going to go ahead and we're going to iron it. You're going to want your parchment paper and you want to make sure it covers your full design. If you don't use parchment paper or cardstock or butcher paper, you're going to end up melting that plastic onto your iron, which you don't want. And then again, 
I'm using a setting that is two settings below my cotton setting. I don't want the iron to be too hot uh, because then it's going to melt the heat transfer. And what we're going to do is instead of resting this and moving it around like we would normally iron out wrinkles, we are going to set it down, keep it in place, and push it down. And we're only going to do that for 10 seconds. Again, if you heat it for too long or too hot, it's going to melt the heat transfer vinyl and ruin your design. So I'm going to do mine um, in three parts. I'm going to use the base of my heat of my iron because that's where the heat's a little bit more even. And I'm going to do um, the word just. I'm going to rest on it and I'm going to push it down for 10 seconds. And so the word just, just should be heated on. I'm going to now do the half of the rolling pin and the word width again for 10 seconds. And now I'm going to do the last part of the rolling pin and the word with it for 10 seconds. And so every part of my design should hopefully have been heated at this point. So what I'm going to do is remove my parchment paper. And um, you can either peel this hot or cold. It doesn't really matter. I recommend letting it cool just a little bit because it will be hot. Um, after it's cooled a little bit, you can gently peel off this plastic. And I say gently because you want to make sure, you want to pay close attention and make sure that your design has properly heated onto your fabric. If you know that, notice that it's peeling away in any way, that means it didn't adhere properly and you want to heat whatever section um, for a couple more seconds. And I would recommend doing the second press five seconds at a time. And again, you only need to do that if it looks like it's not adhered to your towel, which in my case, everything looks like it's properly adhered. So all I have to do is let this cool off and it's ready to go. And that is how you iron on a heat transfer design using your at-home iron. And you should now hopefully have a finished tea towel. If you liked this project and gave it a try, don't forget to post about it on social media and tag us at Ask Elmhurst or hashtag Elmhurst Makery. And thank you for joining me for today's craft.